Gridout 4.3 is out. This version contains thousands of new features and today we'll check out the 5 best ones of it. Also, I will give you a quick explanation as well so that you can start taking advantage of them right away. Let's start. 1. Automatic Updates Check now with all we actually allow you to automatically check for updates without you actually having to worry about anything else basically when you are here in your project manager in Godot, you are going to be able to see this option here offline mode update checks disabled so basically if you go here uh to your settings and you turn on network mode basically now uh, you are going to be able to be checking for the new updates and now as you can see we are going to have here a button that will tell us updates available 4.3 beta 1 so if we click it we're going to be redirected to the download page in which indeed we're going to be able to install the new version available it may sound a little bit useless but in reality it does have lots of usabilities as now you don't really have to have uh to spend lots of time there on the website uh every day looking for if there is some updates or not here you can just open good out and it will tell you if there is an update or not available by default the option is basically turn off basically it is said to be offline so if you really want to take advantage of this you have to change it to online to create folders automatically to create folders automatically whenever you want to create a brand new project now you will have this option over here that will allow you to create a new folder in the project path that you select this option will basically allow you to save a little bit of time because now you don't really have to go here to the browse option and create a brand new folder but on the other hand you can just select the path enable this option and the folder in the path is going to be created right away it may not be uh, an option that will be super a game changer for the Widowed engine but it is still remains as an important new feature that will allow you to save some seconds when creating a new project and also remember that one of the best things about Widowed is the velocity that you have to create new projects so now even with this new feature you will have more time uh, saved 3. Tile Map Layers now let's actually get into the new nodes or the rework of the nodes that there are in this version. So the first of it has to do with tile maps, okay? Even though we still can't use tile maps, uh, this is marked as deprecated, okay? This basically means that it's not going to be receiving any new features and that um, in some time it is going to be deleted, okay? So of course the best idea is going to be to from now on start using tile map layers. The, the way in which they work is super similar and you can actually convert with just some clicks a tile map into a tile map layer okay so i'm going to firstly create a brand new scene with a node and i will save it so that we can start experimenting with both so if i add here a tile map and then a tile map layer in the inspector in the inspector as you can see they see quite similar okay due to the fact that both still use tile set okay so it's quite easy to adapt them and the overall flow it is exactly the same one you always have to create a new tile set and start drawing things around but just if you have any doubts let's quickly create here a new tile set and basically i will just use here the icon of without i will modify the texture region following the size of the without icon and i will modify here the tile size as well okay so by doing this i'm going to be able to uh basically use here my good old icon and the exact same thing is going to happen with our tile map layer we can create a brand new tile set here created with the good old icon and change it here the size and the tile size as well okay and as simple as that we're going to have our tile map layer set up as well so the main difference between all of them it is quite self-explanatory but remember that in time maps we had here different layers that we were able to create but well now actually everything uh, is going to be separated in different time map layer nodes instead of having everything centered on the same tile map node so for example here uh, on your tile map uh, in order to convert 
your timelap into the different timelap layers. I only have here one layer, but for example, let me add other one. So here we have two time, two layers. Um, now what I can basically do is go to this settings button and extract timelap layers as individual timelap layers node. And as you can see now, I do have here my two timelap layers. Super easy with just two clicks. And as they both use the same resource, basically they both use tile sets. Uh, the way in which you set up, for example, physics layers is the exact same one in both. So there isn't really lots of changes in terms of how they are used. Also, there are things in scripting that could be changed, okay? But I don't know, I don't really think that you may have lots of codes with a tile map since it is something that you don't really modify through code. But well, make sure that if you have some script, some script using the time map, make sure that you will probably have to update some methods. But again, it's not a big deal. Four groups. Now the groups window it is a little bit different from what it used to be. So let me select here any node. Are in the groups? Well, we now can find zinc groups and global groups. Okay. First of all, there are going to be differences in terms of the code, so, so you don't really have to modify the code if you are using some kinds of groups. The only thing that will change a little bit is how you can organize these groups, basically how they are displayed in the Godot editor. So basically this is just to have a better organization in your node tab. Here we can see an explanation, basically global groups stored in the Godot.project file and visible to all nodes in basically all scenes, whereas in local groups you are only going to be able to see them in the current scene in which the group was created. So again, you are going to have access in all scripts, in all scenes, in all everything, but the thing that will change is to which nodes in which scenes you can assign them, because if you have a local group in scene 1, you are not going to actually use it in scene 2, unless you actually make it global, okay? And also now here in your project settings in the groups uh, tab, you will have here uh, the global groups editor where you're going to be able to uh, give it a name and also a description about uh, the exact group. Also here this other comment uh, may be quite useful. You can pause the video and read it completely. So if you want, pause the video right now. But basically the overall information is the exact same one. Um, as you can see, the underlying logic of groups is unchanged, so basically it will stay uh, the same. And basically there is only one difference between local and global groups, but basically all things that have to do with the global groups, basically their names and descriptions, are now stored in the Godot file, in the .godot file. So now let's do here a quick test, okay? In this uh, first scene that is named node, I will create here with this add button. I will basically here give it a name, for example, tile map. Okay. And here I am not able to add a description unless I make this global. Okay. So for zinc groups, you can't actually have a description. So they are how tile map. And also when assigning a group, instead of having like to type it or anything like that, you can basically now select it. And also you can copy the group name to the clipboard. So you are going to be able to paste it in your code and avoid any spelling issues. Okay. So here I have time map. So if I want, I can go over here and assign this zinc group over there. But if I create here a brand new scene, as you can see, I don't see it because this is a zinc group. Uh, now, if I right click on it, I'm going to be able to convert it to a global group. So now if I go over here, I'm going to be able to use it. Okay. Um, and also, as I told you, this is a global group. Um, so basically you are also able to add a description when you create it i don't think there is a way that when you already created a global group to actually um add the description i don't think there is a way but actually yes i think there is because if you go to project settings and global groups yes here you have it so here you can add a description but i think there should be a button over here to add it anyway so for example this is the tile map group okay so now over here, we are going to see that description as well. But again, remember, you don't have to change anything in the scripts, in anything in the code, because uh, they are uh, still being accessed in any scene, okay? It is just a way of better organizing your groups and avoid spelling issues. 5. Parallax 2D 
So when we wanted to create some kind of parallax background, we would use a uh, parallax layer and also parallax background. Okay, but here comes a new node um, that is meant to have here the work a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, because it is going to be like an integration between layer and background in basically one node okay so we don't we the idea is that we don't use two nodes to create just one functionality of creating a parallax background as you can see this is still marked as experimental so you may still experiment some kinds of issues um but well it is still something that you can start implementing okay so here in the parallax 2d um the interface and everything is quite similar i will add here a parallax layer so that we can um, check it out so we still have here all the similar options in terms of the scrolling okay in the scaling and, and mirroring etc um oh well here we also have the limits and everything that uh we should use okay so basically the idea here is that Parallax 2D is just like a wrapper of layer of Parallax layer and Parallax background and that it may even have more functionalities than the Parallax layer and Parallax background. Lastly, I wanted to give you some information about Godot 4.3 that is super important to understand, okay? So firstly, even though this is still a beta version, the important thing here is that there aren't going to be new features or risky bug fixes until the release of the official version okay so this means that the nodes that i showed the new features that i showed are not going to be like super updated in the final release probably they are just going to be fixed some things added some features such as for example being able to modify the description of global groups in the inspector and not going to and not having to go to the project settings so those are things that are super easy to implement that are not going to be a game changer for Godot. So that's why I'm basically creating this video, even though Godot 4.3 wasn't officially released. And then other thing that you may be interested in knowing is that they aim to release uh, Godot 4.3 in around a month. So it is quite close to us. But always remember that this timeline may change uh, depending on different factors that how quickly they are able to fix some stuff and how quickly they are able to implement the last features that they want to implement. So basically, this is all for today's video about good old 4.3 beta 1. I'm going to be uploading dozens of videos about this version because it's full of new features. And I, I am even creating a series of tutorials about these features that we were discussing, but in more depth, basically how to use better time map layers, which are some of the advantages. We can also talk more about the parallax 2D and the groups functionality. So if you really want to take advantage the most that you can of good old 4.3 don't hesitate to subscribe right now to the channel because you're going to be able to really take advantage of literally every single feature that good old 4.3 will give us okay so i will see you in the following video subscribe like and comment for more good old content and i'm eager to uh, read your comments in the section down below see you there and um, bye bye